number three, Alabama, at number six, Tennessee. This is going to be a wild environment. If any of you, and I know these people, I may work with one of them. If any of you know a Tennessee fan, you know that this is like, I don't even like, they can't even contain themselves. It doesn't matter if they've gotten no sleep. It doesn't matter. Like, they can't contain themselves about this game. They have been thinking about the decade of disaster, and yet it doesn't register because it's here. Tennessee playing not just Alabama, but relevant Tennessee playing Alabama at home. The environment in Neyland is going to be wild. I mean, if they win, they might burn the stadium down. You never know. You never know. Tennessee fans are passionate. At times, they go way overboard, and they are crazy, but they are crazy for their team. Did you hear them singing Rocky Top in Baton Rouge last week? They took over Baton Rouge. It's not like they took over Vandy, which like you would understand, right? Like They took over LSU's stadium. Tiger Stadium, there they were singing Rocky Top. And that place is going to be ready, ready for Bama. And Bama's in trouble. Bama's in trouble. Bama's favored by seven. That's too much. Just telling you right now. Here's why. If you really dig into what Alabama is, they are vastly better at home than they are in true road games. Okay, take out neutral sites and just look at true road games. Okay, and you'll look at a team that this year at home is allowing about seven and a half points per game. Okay, seven and a half. That's amazing. That defense is amazing. Do you know on the road they give up 22 and a half? Okay, so what do they do on offense? Well, at home, they score 49.3 points per game, almost 50 points per game. That's really good. So their margin of victory at home is 42. That's really good. That's even with last week entered into the equation. You know, they score on the road about 34 and a half points. That's a margin of 12. That is vastly different. Look at what they've done over the last couple of years. Last year, struggling with Florida on the road. Got beat by AM. What was it? Four overtimes against Auburn. This year, Texas. They got lucky to win that game at Texas. Again, true road games, they're not great. They're not great. And Tennessee is good in the exact spot that gives Alabama problems, which is the pass defense. We saw in the first quarter against um, Texas when Q Quinn Ewers was hurting them down the field. We even saw it to a degree last week. Their pass defense is, is not great. Guess who is leading the SEC and is second in the country in terms of 30-yard or more pass plays? Tennessee. Hendon Hooker, here you go. This is what you came to Tennessee for, and this is why I think a lot of people are so excited about your play because it's been so good. They have 16 plays, pass plays of 30 or more yards. The only team in the country with more than that is Ohio State, which you'd be like, well, yeah, that makes sense. Ohio State is the best offense in the country. And guess who's not far behind? Tennessee. Tennessee is really good on the offensive side. I like what Josh Heupel does from a schematic standpoint. I really love what Hendon Hooker brings them. They're balanced to some degree. They've got speed. They can attack. They haven't even had their best wide receiver, and yet they've got wide receivers out there playing remarkably well. Brew McCoury is one of them. So this Tennessee team is uniquely built to match up with this Alabama team, which is not great in pass defense and certainly has struggled over the last couple of years on the road. When you look at Hendon Hooker, he's got two TDs in every single game. He hasn't thrown an interception. And since he became the Tennessee quarterback, I think he's like over 40 touchdowns and only, I think, like three interceptions. He has been outstanding. Last week, Alabama got away without with with not playing Bryce Young. They won't get away with that this, this week. They have to have Bryce Young even to make this close. They were able to play one-dimensional offense last week, 51 carries, over five yards a carry against an A&M team. Why? Because A&M is dead last in the SEC in stopping the run. Well, guess who's really good at stopping the run? Tennessee, number two. 
So Bama is going to have to throw it, which means Bryce Young is going to have to be on the field, which means he's going to have to be protected, which means that they're going to have to run it a little bit in order to protect him. There's a lot of pressure on Jameer Gibbs against a much better run defense in order to protect Bryce Young a little bit. This is a bad matchup for Alabama. I'm just telling you right now, the seven is too much. Bama is favored by seven. Give me Tennessee in this one. I'm actually calling for an outright win from Tennessee. Tennessee at home in that environment, I think, beats Alabama this week. It's a bad matchup for Alabama. You cannot gloss over some of the things that I've talked about here. Their road struggles. The fact that Tennessee is able to stop the run, and if you can't run it, then Bryce Young is going to be right in the crosshairs. This is a bad matchup for Bama. I'm ringing the alarm bells. I'm taking Tennessee outright, even though they're getting seven. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoy that clip, make sure you click subscribe somewhere down here. From game highlights to exclusive interviews and rankings, we've got everything you need as a college football fan right here, College Football on Fox.